just a few minutes, the idea of verbal ping pong will make a lot more sense. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Ken. And we're here to help you discover exactly how to give a memorable elevator speech. But first we should uh, probably start by talking about what an elevator speech actually is. And how it helps you and your company. And why you should care. Because an elevator speech really doesn't have much to do with uh, elevators. No matter what division or department we work for, no matter what our title or position, we're all in sales. When someone asks us the question, you know, you're talking to someone in an informal situation, at Starbucks, at a party, or at your kid's soccer game. When someone asks you the most important, awkward, open-ended question you ever receive in your professional life. What do you do? The reality is, at the moment you're asked the question, you are transformed. You are now the director of sales, the VP of marketing, and the chief branding officer all in one. To the person you're talking to, you represent the entire company. That's why most of us secretly hate getting asked the question. The problem is, we don't have a concise, practiced answer. So a lot of times, we see the question coming and actually try to avoid it. Or wind up giving some lame, stumble-bumble answer. Yep, it doesn't matter if you've been doing your job for five months or five years. Almost all of us fear the question. Don't fear the question, no, no, no. That's right, you no longer need to fear the question. Because Ken and I are gonna show you how to craft a memorable elevator speech for what you and your company offer. So you'll know exactly what to say when someone asks, so what do you do? Ah! Remember, can you no longer need to fear the question? Oh, right. Now, let's put this whole thing in context. We're not talking about official sales calls here. Oh, your elevator speech is what you say when you're just talking with people in informal situations. It's called an elevator speech because it's an answer short enough to be said between floors on an elevator ride. Here's how we define elevator speech. A progressively revealed, conversational answer to the question, what do you do? That you deliver in such a way that people want you to keep talking. Okay, progressively revealed. You don't have to tell the entire story in one giant monologue. How many seconds do you think your answer should be when someone asks you the question? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, uh, 15 seconds, or even 30 seconds, 45, maybe. Uh, under a minute, under a minute. Yeah, let, let's try that in real time. So Ken, what do you do? Go. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 the other person hits the ball to you by asking the question. You immediately hit it back to them with a short answer. Then they decide if you'll both keep playing. What you don't want to do is hold on to the ball. Thanks for asking, Ken. I'm going to talk for a while. You might want to sit down. No! OK, the next part of the elevator speech definition is conversational answer. That means you talk like normal people, not like the Wall Street Journal. Yes, I'm a leadership systems expert for Mega Services, which is an industry leader in delivering maximum value through value-added dynamic processes and customer-oriented networks, as well as fully integrated employee enhancement programs, which achieve measurable world-class results that can be escalated to meet the increasing needs of an increasingly complex business environment that demands precision, professionalism, and something else that starts with the letter P. Now, yeah, if you were actually to talk to someone like that in an informal situation, they think you were a freak. Okay, next part of the definition that you deliver in such a way that people want you to keep talking. This means after you say one line, look for the other person to show that they're interested in what you just said. How do they do that? Simple, with the Scooby-Doo response. <laughs> you know you've got someone hooked when they cock their head or raise their eyebrow or grunt out a huh, what, hmm, er, er, hi, er. Getting that kind of non-verbal reaction means they've hit you the ping pong ball again. It's permission for you to keep talking. Note, Scooby-Doo is a registered copyright of Hanna-Barbera, and our parody reference cleverly avoided any actual images of the real Scooby-Doo, instead substituting a rather pathetic picture of Brian in a generic Great Dane getup. Thank you. 
deep down people really want to give you the Scooby-Doo response. When they ask you, what do you do, they're hoping you'll say something like, we build the guidance systems in the space shuttles. We train Navy SEALs. We make those cool machines at grocery stores that take your coins and turn them into dollar bills. Now, your answer may not seem as cool, but come on, your job is still sexy. And people are into it. They've experienced what you do, or their company has bought your company's products, or theoretically could buy them. Remember, they asked you the question because they already found you interesting. So don't stop being interesting when you talk about what you do. And you do that by following our simple elevator speech formula. which comes with its own four second hit song. The wow is your one sentence answer to what do you do? It's what you say to get the Scooby-Doo response. <laughs> then comes how, a sentence or two that explains how you do your job and how it benefits them. After that, the now. Now is the start of the three most powerful words in the English language, now, for example. Because that's the start of a story. And everyone likes a good story. Especially if it's short. The elevator speech opportunity is to quickly connect the person you're talking with to the big concept of what you do. And that happens by you giving a progressively revealed conversational answer in the wow, how, now formula. We'll show you how this can work with a solution for a completely invented automatic defibrillator company called HeartMax Technologies. Which you gotta admit is a tougher sell conversationally than your company's product or service. So, Brian, what do you do? I'm in the human jumper cable business. Bam, short and intriguing. That's your wow line. You've got them hooked. And the person you're talking to is gonna go, bah. Why? Because human jumper cable business sounds really interesting. It would be impossible for them to stop listening to you right now. They have to know more. So they will give you the Scooby-Doo response or even ask you what that means. Verbal ping pong. After you get the Scooby-Doo grunt or nod, you jump to the how line. I work for HeartMax Technology. It's my job to get our automatic defibrillator units, like those paddle things in the yard, <laughs> into companies and schools. Now they're starting to get the picture of what your company does. They're thinking, oh, so that's what he meant by human jumper cables. At this point, they may say something, or they'll give you more head nodding. That's permission for you to say another line with a customer benefit. Like, so normal non-medical people, like you and me, can actually save our coworkers and kids. At this point, most people will go, oh, or they'll give you the New York mouth. That means, okay, that's enough, you're done. But sometimes they'll be hooked and wanna know more of the story. With those people, you jump in with a compelling real world story from your department or business unit, starting with the three power words, now, for example. And once you're into a story, the elevator speech is over. Now you're having what behavioral scientists call a conversation. Maybe that'll lead to a give me your card situation or even a sales pitch. You never know. But what you do know is now, in a memorable way, you've helped position in others' minds what you and your company do. So with these short memorized lines, you are ready with a progressively revealed conversational answer to the question. What do you do? That you deliver in such a way that people want you to keep talking. So. What do you guys do?